Author and theoretical physicist Michu Kaku once said, "The human brain has 100 billion neurons, each neuron connected to 10,000 other neurons. Sitting on your shoulders is the most complicated object in the known universe." While we are unlocking more of the brain's wonders each day, there is still much that is unknown. Now imagine a time when there was almost nothing known about this amazing organ. When it was a myth, the brain even emitted electrical activity. Then a man named Hans Berger solved one of the first pieces to this puzzle. Hans Berger's groundbreaking electroencephalograph resulted in him becoming the leader and founder of electroneurodiagnostics and ushered in a new era in medicine. His legacy lives on in modern science and medicine as he was the first to take a step in unlocking the wonders of the human mind. What kind of drew me to the field of neurology is that, in, to me, it seems like it's basically the last frontier of medicine. Not to say that we understand everything about the heart or everything about the liver, but we understand a lot about the heart. We understand a lot about the liver, about the brain. I think we're still understanding just the beginnings of how the brain works, of how our nervous systems work, and、um, and if we didn't have the EEG, you know, like I said, especially in the treatment of epilepsy and seizure disorders. It's our main tool. So if we didn't have the EEG, then I don't think we would be able to offer nearly as much as we are able to offer. Hans Berger created his electroencephalograph, or EEG, by building off of basic knowledge provided by earlier scientists, including Wilhelm Einthoven, who created the electrocardiogram in 1902 and recorded electrical pulses from the human heart. At that same time in 1902, Hans Berger began his research. For eight years, he studied the cerebral electrical activity in dogs. During this time, he faced many hardships, including both technical problems with the development of the EEG and battles with himself to find the confidence to keep moving forward despite his countless failures and external criticisms. After a long struggle, he had the breakthrough he was looking for on July 6, 1924. He recorded the. First, pertinent oscillations in a 17-year-old male with a skull defect. In 1925, Berger first began to study patients without skull defects and made his EEG useful to the general public. From 1926 to 1929, he successfully recorded alpha waves. At the end of his work in the 1930s, he studied brain waves when patients were conscious and conducted the first EEG recording of sleep. He had a plan to.、Uh... Get more information from brain waves, and developed a plan on how to do it, and carried it out. And even as I said, he wasn't well recognized initially, and it took him, I believe, five years to even publish his first paper、uh, on EEG. But he kept at it and, and did it, and saw it through. And as I said, it's even progressed farther since then. Because of his ingenuity and the way he inspired other neuroscientists around the world, Berger became the founder of a new field of medicine called electroneurodiagnostics. He began his leadership with two young neuroscientists, Edgar Adrian and Brian Harold Matthews. Berger taught them about his process, the EEG, and the many applications the EEG held in advancing medicine. These two assistants then helped to begin Berger's extensive legacy. In 1934 and 1935, on behalf of Berger, his assistants conducted a conference for the Physiological Society in London. This spread Berger's work and allowed it to live on and flourish in medicine worldwide. Berger then led a neuroscience symposium in 1937. During this conference, he lectured groups of world-famous neuroscientists and received a standing ovation for the knowledge he provided. It was at this time he said with tears in his eyes, "In Germany, I am not so famous." With this, Berger continued to guide neuroscientists in the utilization of his EEG and allowed them to return to their countries and apply the knowledge Berger provided them. After the conference, Berger published his medical journals in 1938, further allowing access to his knowledge and encouraging others to build off of his work for the further advancement of medicine and people as a whole. Later in 1938, the Nazi regime wanted not only unlimited access to Berger's journals but also to his EEG equipment. Berger refused and openly protested the Nazis. In an attempt to pressure Berger into giving up his machine, they removed him from his position at the University of Jena. When Berger still refused to hand his machine over, they destroyed his laboratory and his work, banned any further work related to the EEG, and forced him out of Jena. 
Despite all of this, Berger refused to hand his EEG over to the Nazis. When the Nazis saw that Berger's open defiance continued, they prepared to force Berger to work for them. It was at this point that Berger did the one thing left in his power to prevent the Nazis from misusing his work. On June 1st, 1941, at the age of 68, Hans Berger took his life. By taking his life instead of working for the Nazis, Berger showed the greatest act of leadership. He stood by his morals and had the bold audacity to say no I will not work to harm humankind. This showed the world that leaders are those who set out to change the world and refuse to compromise their vision for anything or anyone. Despite Hans Berger's death, his legacy continued through his own journals and in the journal Science. This journal taught about and continued to build on Berger's original findings, allowing the use of the EEG to advance. After Berger's death, the end of World War II and Nazi control of Germany had ceased, the German Society of Clinical Neurophysiology awarded him for long-standing extensive academic work in theoretical and clinical neurophysiology. This award still exists today and has been given to many other neuroscientists who live up to Berger's standards. Perhaps Berger's biggest legacy lives on in medicine itself, as he is considered to be the father of neurophysiology. Well, mainly that a lot of things would just we wouldn't be sure what they were. They would be uh, unrecognized of what the real problem is. So I'm sure you just wouldn't get the appropriate treatment, get the wrong medicine, or get a medicine you don't even need. And so by able being able to localize where the problem is, is how you're going to be able to treat it best. Berger's legacy is his EEG, which has the ability to map brain function. The EEG is the only machine capable of examining the brain's function by mapping its brain waves. This incredible ability makes it a necessity in any neuropatient's diagnosis and treatment. This has been invaluable in the diagnosis and treatment of epilepsy, Alzheimer's, migraines, multiple sclerosis, strokes, sleep disorders, brain tumors, and innumerable other neurological disorders. And so it helps guide us in making a diagnosis in patients where it's not clear of what they're experiencing or seizures or not, then we have EEG capability where we can connect them to an EEG machine for 24 hours at a time. And we can, uh, um, there's a video camera in the room and we can see what they look like when they're having an episode. And then I can go back and look at the EEG data and I can then determine if what they're experiencing is a seizure or if it might be something else that sort of looks like a seizure. So it's indispensable in my practice, it's critical, it's the number one tool that we use. Well, with both MS and Alzheimer's can have seizures that go unrecognized. So for example, someone with Alzheimer's can be confused, more confused than usual, and in a few cases that they're having what's called non-convulsive seizures. So they're not convulsing, they're not being recognized as seizures. Berger's legacy is extended because his EEG has also given rise to sleep medicine. It also has transferred over to sleep medicine, part of uh, in different sleep stages and, and recognizing sleep problems, which has also had a huge impact on medicine. William Gray Walter wrote in his book, The Living Brain. Berger, in 1935, was not regarded by his associates as in the front rank of German psychiatrists, having rather the reputation of being a crank. He seemed to be a modest and dignified person, full of good humor, and is unperturbed by lack of recognition. This quote is perhaps the best way to describe Berger's accomplishments and how he managed them throughout his life. He faced many failures and struggles along the way. The EEG was the first machine to map the function of the brain. He then showed his leadership by teaching other neuroscientists and showing people that standing by what is right makes a great leader. His legacy lives on through the work of those who were inspired by Berger's leadership, his own scientific writings, books about him and his work, and modern medicine for all patients. This legacy is so encompassing that more than one out of every six people will need the technology of Berger's EEG to diagnose and treat their neurological disorder. Imagine, without this man's ability to map the electrical function of the brain and play with the mind, where would we be now?